Hey there, XKeys user. If you own an XK68 jog and shuttle unit like I do, you might be having the same trouble I did. I could not find any good tutorials on how to set up and make the jog shuttle knob work, specifically in DaVinci Resolve. I couldn't find a good tutorial, and the instructions that came with the software were too difficult and flat out didn't work. So I hope this will save you some time and some stress in your life. So. Um, going to the website, you have two solutions that you can use. They offer both MacWorks 3.1 for Windows and the controller made for X keys. I use Mac, so what I did it on is controller made for X keys meant for the Mac. Download the software, install it. It is not user friendly. I <laughs> can't say that enough. It's pretty darn difficult, but I have to admit the longer I used it, the easier it got. These are the basic instructions on how to make this happen. So once I have controller made running, I want to open up a brand new page starting from scratch. On my computer, I have two units hooked up. I have my XK68 jog shuttle as well as a 20 key unit. With my XK68 selected, I simply turn the dial and it will highlight for me that particular uh, function. Drag it in and now I'm ready to start programming it. Where I need to go is down to calculation and you want the accumulator building block. Drag it and connect it. When you press it, you want to make sure you have your inspector open. You want to have this available to you. You're going to be using it. So by pressing on the accumulator button, I now have these values that I can change. And what I want is to make the initial value zero. I want to make my minimum value minus one. And I want to make my maximum value one. The only thing else I need to do is make sure that this is selected, reset to the initial value, and turn off the reset input. Now we want to grab the value selector building block, and we want two of them. So once these are on the screen, the first thing I need to do is connect. So by clicking here and dragging it over here, this is now connected. That is going to change the functionality. You want to make sure you have these done, otherwise uh, your, your inspector is going to look incorrect. So now, after these are connected, you want to click here, and now you have this ability, and on the left-hand selection, I want minus 1. On the right-hand selection, I want 1. Now I'm going to be adding new keys. I want to come here back to the palette, go to Output. I want to choose a keystroke building block and attach it. Grab the other keystroke building block and attach it. For the one on the left, we want, of course, arrow to the left. So the easy way to do that is with it turned in, you know, I have to select it. With it selected, this will now allow me to record my keystrokes. So I'm going to capture. I'm going to hit my left arrow. It is uh, not only recording when I push down, but when I released it. So now it has a down up. Hit stop. That's done. Now I'm going to select the second one. I'm going to capture over here. Same thing, capture again. This time I'm going to choose arrow to the right, hit stop, and that's it. Now as I turn the jog dial, it is engaging the left and arrow wheels. So now when I come into DaVinci Resolve and turn the jog knob left and right, it will in fact engage the software. So now moving on to the shuttle knob, again coming back to controllers so we can actually get the functionality we want. Turn the shuttle back and forth and now you can see the outer dial um, was highlighted for me. I'm going to drag that in. So for the outer dial, I'm going to come in here and add the value selector block. I'm going to need two of them on the value selector block once it is hooked up. I now have minus one for the one on the left, one for the one on the right, and now I want to add the keystrokes. Coming down here, I want to sh add a shift and then add J. Now you'll notice I did it by dragging from the keystroke palette. This will give me a different functionality over here as before where you saw me actually record my keystrokes. I'm doing it differently this time because I prefer a different functionality. By dragging it from the keystrokes palette, I now have these two choices, press and hold and one shot. Press and hold actually works better for this. So now I'm going to grab shift and L and again press and hold. So for L, I have press and hold, and for J, I have press and hold. 
Now when I come back into DaVinci Resolve and I turn the knob and hold it, I don't have to hold it, I can just turn the knob. So now, and just like on my keyboard, if I keep turning, if I turn, uh, if I turn, let go, turn, let go, turn, let go, it will uh, keep going faster and faster and faster. And to stop it, you can just turn the jog wheel. It's important to remember that you want to close out the program. That's the final test to make sure everything's working correctly. So save it and then close Controller Mate. Go into DaVinci Resolve and uh, make sure your unit is working correctly. And that's it. That's how you set up your jog and shuttle knob. And I uh, hope this uh, makes your life just a little bit easier. Thanks for watching.